Joining us from Big Ten Media Days is editor-in-chief of the Athletics College Football section as well as co-host of the Audible podcast that is Stuart Mandel. Stuart, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Thanks so much for joining us. You just listened to Urban Meyer on the podium. Big news out of Columbus is that he is firing his wide receivers coach, Zach Smith, for domestic situation. Doesn't look like there's any violence on record in this, but instead a situation where two people now split want to have some distance, at least she does from him. What did Urban just say about the incident, if anything? Well, the, the key takeaway and the question we all had, I mean, we were all finding out for the first time in the last 24 hours or so about a 2009 incident when Zach Smith was on the staff as an intern at Florida with, as you said, who is now his ex-wife. And we didn't know, well, did Urban Meyer know about that in 2009 or not? And he said he did, uh, that it was investigated, that his quote was that it wasn't as it was reported, and so there was no action taken then. Uh, but I think there's a lot of holes still to be filled in, and he'll be speaking again later today in terms of the timeline of, okay, if that's the case, um, why now? Why is he being dismissed now? Um, if he's been, you know, for, what, eight, nine years, been of the impression that that wasn't that big a deal. Yeah, that is interesting. And from what I've read, it's about a restraining order and not about actual violence against the spouse. Is that well, right? There was alleged violence in 2009. Urban characterized it at the podium today as, um, you know, he, he said that it was a young couple. He alluded to, that it was maybe just a correctable mistake that he and his wife, uh, he and Urban and his wife advised them to get counseling. I mean, I think one thing to understand all is Zach Smith is uh, the grandson of Earl Bruce, the, the former Ohio State coach who Urban was an assistant for himself and who was very, very close with. And so there's always been this feeling that, you know, that was a big part of why he brought him on at Ohio State, why he has stayed with him at Ohio State. Um, so I think this is a really tough thing for him to have to do. Um, and he's right now trying to, to balance, um, you know, defending the honor, I guess, a little bit of this guy he's so close with, but also trying to justify why he had to fire him. It does feel, though, like there's going to be more information that would come out shortly, right, if they did choose to do this, if Urban decided to do this on the eve of the football season. I mean, yesterday there was a uh, Brett McMurphy reported about uh, allegations from 2015, and, and then it was shortly after that that he fired him. So there was an illogical reason to think those were connected. But then Urban said at the podium that he looked into that, he, he seemed, from what he was saying, that he only found out about that himself yesterday, looked into it, found there was nothing to it. So apparently that was not the reason for the firing. Stuart Mandel joins us, editor-in-chief for the Athletics College Football section. What a tremendous website it is. They are all over college football. He joins us here from Big Ten Media Days. We played some of the audio from Jim Harbaugh yesterday, and I think Harbaugh just had coach speak, and he's so often not just about coach speak. Made me wonder if he feels the pressure right now and understands he hasn't gotten it done against his rivals and won that league or won that division, and so he can't necessarily be as quirky and outspoken. Did you feel like he was more reserved than you would have expected? Yeah, he seemed very low-key. Um, now, after they're up at the podium, they then do an hour smaller groups, and he was kind of up and all over the place, as he often is, all over the place in that interview. But I do think he's in a much different place then, for instance, coming in here for the first time in 2015, uh, brimming with confidence, everybody excited about them. You know, there's no question. They're coming off a very disappointing season. They haven't, you know, he had a good first two seasons but didn't get the record you would expect against the rivals yet. Um, so it's, there's just a whole different vibe around it. I kind of contrasted that with Scott Frost coming in here yesterday from Nebraska, exuding confidence. I mean, he's the hot story in the Big Ten right now. He hasn't coached a game. Um, we'll see if three years from now everybody still is excited about Scott Frost. But it does feel like Harbaugh went from being the, the guy that gets the most covers, that's the most buzzed about in this conference, even more so at times than Urban Meyer, to now, you know, there are other coaches here, there are other big-name coaches that uh, have earned more attention. Many people think that Michigan is actually the fourth-best team in that division behind Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan State. What do you think? I'm higher on Michigan than that in terms of the, the – I mean, I think it's a really – it has the potential to be a really good team. The missing piece was quarterback. They think they have that now in Shea Patterson, the transfer from Ole Miss. So I do think it has a chance to be his best team so far. The problem is the schedule. You know, you open right off the bat at Notre Dame. You get 
you know, the, the Mich- Ohio State, Michigan State, Penn State, as always, but also a crossover game against Wisconsin. So those are five games right there against teams that will be ranked fairly high in the preseason. Could they have a better team but still not have the kind of record that Jim Harbaugh was hired to, to you know, be posting by now in his fourth season at Michigan? Are you buying on Scott Frost in Nebraska being the perfect hire? I think it's about as perfect a marriage as you could ask for. Um, this is a, a, a fan base that's obviously been uh, through a lot over the last 15 years or so. And so to have the hometown guy, the homeschool guy coming back and frankly saying all the right things about getting Nebraska back to where it was under Tom Osborne, you know, restoring the, the, uh, the days where Nebraska was known as the really physical program, but also bringing this really exciting offense with him that he has had so much success with at Oregon uh, and UCF. I wrote about that in my column on The Athletic. I think that'll be the interesting experiment here where he's saying he's going to try to blend that up-tempo spread offense that a lot of people often think is, a, is, is exciting but not necessarily tough and physical. He's saying he's going to do that, and it's going to be mash mouth the way Nebraska football used to be. Final question, is this the season you think James Franklin can finally elevate into a college football playoff? I think it's going to be tough given how much they lost from last season. And obviously everybody focuses on Saquon Barkley, who is a special player, but it's more than that. A lot of great players on defense that they have to replace. Um, I think they'll be very good. Uh, Trace McSorley, for one thing, one of the better quarterbacks in the country potentially. But if you look at them compared with what Ohio State has coming back, what Michigan State has coming back, a very underrated team, yeah, I, I think this is more a bridge year for him to maybe have that kind of season next year. I've got to tell you, I love what you guys are doing at The Athletic. It is really quality journalism. The site is so easy. The app is so easy to navigate. And you guys are just loading up on college football. You guys got seven national college football writers, 19 team-specific writers for college football as well. You guys are absolutely doing a wonderful job. You must be really fired up about the athletic going into college football season. Yeah, thank you very much. We're very excited. We've gone in a year's time from, from the site not existing yet to, like you said, 26 writers dedicated to college football, both nationally and locally. No ads, no pop-up videos, just really good stories. It's clean. It's clear. It's good. It's quality. It is totally worth the buy and the subscription. Check it out. The Athletic. Stuart Mandel, editor-in-chief there, premium national college football site, and, of course, co-host of the po- the podcast called The Audible. He is live right now at the Big Ten Media Days. Stuart, it's always good to catch up. I'm sure we'll do it again as we creep closer to the season, man. Thanks so much. Thank you. Stuart Mandel joining us this morning here on the show.